1956, America set off to build the most elaborate network of highways on the planet. Spanning over 46,000 miles, one could say America has developed an addiction to highways. They are indeed effective at transporting people long distances via car. However, it's the use of highways to travel short distances that has had the largest impact, and not in the best way. In virtually every major U.S. city, highways were constructed right through the urban core. When these highways were built, the goal was to move people from suburbs to the city quickly and easily. Yet this trend came at a huge cost. Traffic congestion continues to rise, and cities are left divided by these highways. They spurred suburban sprawl and forced cities to adapt to the automobile. So, why did cities agree to these interstates in the first place? And how can they fix the issue now? In 1956, Dwight Eisenhower passed the Interstate Highway Act, which aimed to improve United States automobile connectivity. With the federal government agreeing to pay 90% of the price tag for all new highway construction projects, it left states eager to begin construction on these mega roads. Although these new highways were great for connecting cities with suburbs and rural America, they aren't well suited for cities themselves. And upon their completion, cities saw an exodus from their limits. Growing suburbs decreased city populations as wealthier individuals left. Interstates made it possible to commute into the city via car. When designing these highways, many cities saw these developments as an excuse to demolish minority neighborhoods as a means to build these roads. Over 40,000 miles of interstate highways later, America's cities are left cut off, segregated, and divided by these large highways. Today, American cities are now left to grapple with these behemoth roads running right through their city centers. And although these interstates have become ingrained into American cities, it's not too late to mitigate and ease the impact these roads have had on city life. Across the country, cities have begun to rethink the importance of urban highways. After examining highway removal efforts adopted by different American cities, there are three main ways that cities go about easing the impact of these highways. The first way cities go about solving this problem is to completely get rid of the highway and replace it with either a street level boulevard or a park. This solution serves to splice divided regions of a city back together while still providing space for car traffic. Street level boulevards are relatively easy for pedestrians to cross, as they consume less space than a giant highway, yet allow for crosswalks. For example, Rochester, New York recently removed a one-mile portion of their East Loop Highway and replaced it with a street-level boulevard, which they call the Union Street Corridor. This corridor takes up considerably less room, and market-rate affordable housing 5 over 1C buildings are being built up along the street. Rochester was faced with a choice of repairing this portion of the loop or removing it completely. The city determined it was considerably cheaper, costing an estimated 25 million, to bury the one mile highway section. This price tag netted up to $300 million in private investment, a considerable return for a relatively small price tag. Proposal one worked for Rochester, as this one mile portion of highway was underutilized meaning there was minimal public backlash when they removed it. Portland, Oregon did a similar thing with their Harbor Drive freeway. 
where instead of turning it into a boulevard, they built a park. However, implementing highway removal projects in cities that are heavily reliant on their highways could potentially create more traffic congestion while leading to public backlash. And that leads to the second solution cities use to grapple with their urban highways, and that is tunnels. This is undoubtedly the most expensive option. Just ask Boston. However, it is a strong option for cities that want to get rid of a highway in their downtown area, but still heavily rely on that highway. This solution completely removes the highway from the surface level, allowing traffic to flow underground. Two prominent examples of this solution are seen in Boston and Seattle. Aiming to get rid of their central artery highway, Boston spent over $14 billion on their Big Dig Highway mega project, which buried the elevated highway running through their city. Upon project completion, some estimates show that travel times through this portion of highway decreased by as much as 60% upon completion of the mega project. And it brought green space back to the city center in the place of the old highway. However, the cost of this project at a whopping $14 billion is a huge downside to these tunnels. Paying off their Big Dig project will take the city of Boston over 40 years. However, Seattle managed to implement a tunnel for significantly lower cost than Boston did. Before construction, Seattle's Alaskan Way Viaduct was a double-decker highway that split the city from its waterfront. Damaged by an earthquake, the city looked at possible solutions. They could not get rid of the highway altogether. So instead, they bore a deep underground tunnel to run the highway through. The new tunnel, called the SR99 tunnel, was Seattle's answer to this problem. In the old highway's place, they are constructing a street-level boulevard in a park to reconnect the city to its waterfront. The project cost $3.29 billion, running approximately $223 million over budget. So, what is the best solution? And it depends on what city you ask. Tunnels are the best of both worlds, allowing cities to have the convenience of highways without the negative repercussions. Yet, the enormous cost to undertake these projects can easily strain city budgets. The real answer is that either of these solutions is better than having a street-level highway. As long as cities keep rethinking the impact of their urban highways and identify and implement solutions that best fit their city's needs, it serves as an important step in acknowledging the negative impact these highways have on urban centers and represent a future where highways can be less of a burden on American cities. Thank you.